right. Hi, everyone. My name is Iris Tien. I'm an associate professor in civil and environmental engineering, and I'm happy to be here to talk about our work with related to sustainability. Um, so our research work focuses on infrastructure systems. So we look at things like water distribution networks, power systems, transportation systems. And what we found is that these infrastructure networks are critical to community sustainability in terms of the types of resources that are used and distributed across the community. They're critical to the resilience of a community in terms of being able to recover from a disaster if there's damage and um, lack of services for a community. Infrastructure systems are critical to recovery. And finally, we've also found that these systems are critical to equity in communities. And so if we look at potential investments across different types of communities, historical investments or underinvestments in different types of communities, infrastructure really underlies a lot of what we rely on for daily operations and daily life. And so being able to look at infrastructure systems and networks across um, communities is really critical across all three facets of sustainability, resilience, and equity. Um, and so what I wanted to talk specifically about today was work that we've been doing with um, infrastructure looking at reducing flood risk. And so we've been looking at green and gray infrastructure to uh, reduce flood risk in coastal communities. So gray infrastructure is things like pipes, stormwater, uh, sewers, drains, and things like that. Green infrastructure is things like parks, retention ponds, um, large green spaces, things that kind of more naturally absorb water and then release it over time. Um, and so what we found is that we are able to look at um, different aspects of these infrastructure systems. So one of the things that we recently did was to actually look at these um, different factors um, across green and gray infrastructure. And so the two in the main questions that we wanted to try to answer is, helping communities choose what type of infrastructure to select to reduce flood risk. So should they choose green, should they choose gray? It might seem like green is always better, but um, maybe um, economically speaking, for example, uh, gray might be more efficient. Um, and so we still wanna keep those on the table, but we wanna help communities choose which type of infrastructure should we have. And then the second question that we wanted to answer was also where should communities place this infrastructure? So flooding is very geographically um, dispersed and has a lot of different geographical um, location specific parameters that are important. And so we wanted to create a methodology that helps communities both choose what to infrastructure to put and what where to put it. Um, and so we uh, considered the myriad of different factors that green and gray infrastructure can both address. So things like physical, environmental factors, flood risk, things like that. Um, but one of the novelties that we did was we also included population-based, community-based factors as well. So things like social vulnerability, um, population characteristics, um, and kind of historical flooding events as well. And so what we wanted to do was really have a methodology that can account for all these different types of factors that affect infrastructure performance, um, and then put it into a methodology that is both rigorous scientifically, but also able to communicate well with stakeholders. And so in this work, we worked really closely with um, stakeholders in Chatham County on the coast of Georgia, and we were able to um, talk with them uh, talk about their priorities in selecting green infrastructure and gray infrastructure. And we actually integrated that as part of the process as well. And so the methodology is able to take into account specific stakeholder preferences and priorities, plus all those different factors that I talked about and to, to come up with the, actually a mapping solution to um, prioritize and select infrastructure, um, infrastructure solutions. And so finally, what I wanted to um, close with is that what we've also found with um, looking at these types of infrastructure solutions is this whole question of time scale and um, the length of time that is needed. And so infrastructure is are very long-lived assets. You build something, you expect it to last for decades. Um, and if we think about climate as well, these things are changing over these long time scales. And so that's something that we really found to be really important is to be able to have a methodology that is able to account for changing preferences over time, changing characteristics of a community over time. Um, and that is uh, the work that we recently did in collaboration with the community stakeholders to make those infrastructure decisions. Um, so with that, my name is Iris Tian. Um, this is a recently published in a paper um, in Sustainable and Resilient Infrastructure. Happy to talk more about it, and thank you for your time. Thank you.